This is a seven English podcast and you're listening to live stream the adjudicator of death novel chapter 131 mindset Monica had tried to get a hold of the death inquisitor many times and she could clearly feel that he was a young man a young man who was not much different from her this was very terrifying a young man who was about her age had the ability to surpass all the masters what about in a few decades how far would the death inquisitor go Maybe it would really be like in the movies. One sentence could make a person break down and commit suicide. Loggins only hesitated for a moment before making his decision. Everyone looked at the fourth game displayed on the big screen. Mission 1. The key that can be used to rescue Barzil was thrown under the tree in the garden. Barnett can go and seek for it. Mission 2. Rainier will gouge out one of his eyes. Choose a quest within five minutes to complete. Otherwise, any random player will be punished. Everyone in the room looked at the quest on the monitor and the abandoned game below. They were devastated. Why? Why wasn't anyone willing to choose the simplest game? Why did everyone want them to die? But the one who broke down the most was Rainier. After Rainier finished watching the quest with only one eye left, he was on the verge of crying. Fudge! If I take out another eye, I'll be blind. At this moment, the audience in the live broadcast room started to send bullet comments. Ha! What do you think? I want you to become blind. Not only will you become blind, I want you to suffer and die here Anno now. Well done! All the lucky participants chose the most difficult game. That's right! Who were these participants? I want to donate money to them. Let's not talk about it or we might get revenge. After all, that drug lord cousin of Paulette is still in Mexico. You're right. The lucky participants must hide themselves well and never tell anyone. This drug lord cousin was able to bribe Harrison, so he must be very powerful. Don't let him find out. It seems that everyone in America wants them dead. Go to hell. Bastard. Barnett looked at Rainier's devastated expression. If he forced him to complete the mission, he might drag everyone down with him. He had no choice but to say, I'll go save Barzil. See if there are any longer sticks in the room. Soon, Paulette found a wooden stick under the iron box on the monitor. The Death Inquisitor had prepared a lot of props for them. Therefore, Barnett held the phone in one hand and the wooden stick in the other. He walked out of the door like a minesweeper. Barzil also saw the new mission. In fact, he could have carried the animal trap to look for the key, because the other end of the iron chain was tied to a book. But obviously, there must be a trap there, and the mission was assigned. If he went to look for it, even if he was rescued, the mission would not be completed, and everyone would still be blown to pieces by the metal ring on their necks. Barnett walked safely to Barzil and asked, Are you okay? I'm still holding on. Be careful. There must be more traps there. You must open your eyes and look carefully. Barzil reminded him. Barnett confidently answered. Don't worry, I have this thing. As he said that, he knocked the wooden stick on the ground. Bang, bang, bang. Barnett knocked on the ground as he carefully walked forward. He walked for nearly a minute in a short distance of three to four meters. When he got close to the tree, under the light of the flashlight, there was something reflecting light on the ground not far away. Looking carefully, it was a key with a stainless steel ring on it, and some weeds underneath. This time, Barnett was not in a hurry to get the key. Instead, he stared at the ground and walked over bit by bit. Just as he was about to reach, his neck suddenly pulled on a string, and he felt cold. Then there was a soft sound. Whoosh! Several beast traps fell from the top of his head. Bang! One of them landed on Barnett's head. Crack! The beast trap clamped on half of Barnett's head. The sharp teeth bit into his face, leaving huge bloody pits. One of the teeth bit into his right eyeball, directly crushing his eyeball and the eye socket. In an instant, his entire face was covered in blood mixed with transparent and sticky liquid. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Barnett screamed in pain. His whole body was numb from the pain. The flashlight fell to the ground. It was stuck upright by the branches and weeds, and the light shone on his face. 
Fudge! I feel so good watching this. The Death Inquisitor is too amazing. This trap is unexpected. This is the brilliance of the Death Inquisitor. First, he let Barzil fall into the trap. It made everyone think that the animal trap was placed on the ground. That's why Barnett was so careful. He stared at the ground with his eyes wide open. In the end, the animal trap fell from the tree. It was too exciting. Ha! The analysis above is amazing! The Death Inquisitor has used psychology again. It's amazing! I'm getting more and more curious about the identity of the Death Inquisitor. The most common traps used by the Inquisitor are psychology traps. Could it be that his real identity is a psychology professor from a university? I think it's very likely. At this moment, Ross also came up with an analysis. It seems that no matter what kind of game it is, the Death Inquisitor can control people tightly. His ability to control people's thoughts is too strong. Now that their situation has become even more dangerous, Barnett probably can't save Barzil, right? Then we can only wait for Rainier to dig out another eyeball and wait for the Death Inquisitor's punishment. Monica was thinking out loud. What do you think the punishment is about? I guess it should be detonating one of the metal rings. I think so too. Now it's up to them to act. I'd like to see them trigger the punishment. It must be very exciting. At this moment, Morse, Rainier, and Paulette were all stunned. Barnett's scream was like a machete stabbing into their hearts. Everyone broke out in cold sweat and went outside. They only saw Barnett hanging under a tree in the darkness, his body twitching uncontrollably. Help, help. At this moment, Barzil also cried out for help. Come over quickly. Save us. Their voices sounded very weak, as if they were going to die at any moment. The three of them watched from afar, but none of them went over. Everyone was afraid that there were hidden dangers in the darkness that no one knew about. Barzil and Barnett were the best examples. This is a seven English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 132, Nightmare Butcher. Fudge! What happened? Didn't I tell you to be careful? Didn't you see? That trap fell from the tree. Who would have thought? What now? What about the mission? Morse dragged a crippled foot and said coldly to Rainier. Rainier snorted coldly and said, I will definitely not dig out their eyes. I will go and save them. Rainier nervously came to Barnett's side on the road. He only saw that there were a few beast traps that had not been closed yet hanging around him. It looked very dangerous. However, at this time, Barnett's consciousness had already begun to blur. His face was even more miserable. It was as if he had been splashed with blood. The sharp saw teeth bit deeply into the depths of his face. Fudge! Rainier sucked in a cold breath, then used his stick to entangle the beast traps around him and hit them hard. Kacha! Kacha! With a series of sounds, all the beast traps were closed. After eliminating the danger, Rainier approached Barnett and observed him briefly. He found that the beast trap on his head also had a lock. Rainier frowned. Key, key, Barnett suddenly said with a weak breath. His left eye, which was bleeding, slowly looked down. It looked very horrifying, like a malicious ghost. Rainier trembled in fear and then looked down at the key on the ground. Isn't that the key to save Barzil? Could it be that, like the previous live broadcast of death, a key can open all the locks? Rainer thought for a moment. After confirming that it was safe, he slowly picked up the key, inserted it into the lock hole, and turned it. Crack. The latch retreated backwards. It really opened. Rainer's eyes shot out a spirited gaze. All right, bear with it. I'm going to open the beast trap. Rainer said. Barnett rolled his left eyelid and snorted twice. However, because the trap was suspended in the air, Rainier did not use much force. He changed several positions and finally used a wooden stick to push against the tree. The moment the trap was opened, only Barnett's face and scalp were torn off. Rainier then realized that there were some barbs on the edge of the sawtooth of the trap that completely hooked onto his flesh. Ah! Barnett! who was originally weak, 
had a piece of his face and scalp torn off. The pain made his entire body twitch. At this moment, the camera zoomed in and gave a close-up. The moment Barnett's face was torn off, the audience in the live broadcast room was in an uproar. It feels so good to watch. Scream! Scream viciously. The more you scream, the better it feels to watch. You're right! It's so satisfying. The trap is for capturing animals. It's perfect for you. The judge is a genius. Don't insult the animals. But the death judge is indeed a genius. In the end, Barnett escaped. Rayner pulled out the key and dragged him to Barzil's side. Quick! Save Barzil and we'll win this round, Rayner said as he handed the key to Barnett. When Barnett heard that they had won, his left eye, which was about to close, suddenly opened. I want to live! I want to play a lot of people, men and women. That's right! We must live! Those fair and young women are still waiting for us. Hurry up! Open the trap! Rayner encouraged from the side. Hearing their conversation, the hundreds of millions of viewers in the live broadcast room were furious. Fudge you! You bastards! Even if you come out alive! I'll go over and kill you! The law can't judge you! If the death broadcast lets you live, we'll go over and kill you! Fudge you! I'm 30 years old and still single. Not only did you fudge and kill so many people, you also want to play with more people and men? We have to kill you! However, under Rainier's encouragement, Barnett suddenly became much more clear-headed. Crack. The bolt was pulled out. Creak. The animal trap was opened, and the barbs on it also hooked onto Barzil's flesh and pulled it down. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Waves of screams rang out, but they seemed to spread in the darkness and disappeared without a sound. When Barzil pulled his arm out, the place where he was caught had lost all his flesh, revealing his pale bones. Fresh blood kept dripping down from the top, and the scene was very bloody and horrifying. At this moment, Rainier looked at Barzil and said with a cold smile, We're saved! Barzil was stunned. The two of them then dragged Barnett back into the room. Under the bright light, the flesh on Barnett's face rolled up exaggeratedly. In his right eye socket, there was a thick, translucent liquid flowing from the corner of his eye to his ear. It was very sticky, the skin and flesh inside the torn face was very horrifying in the blood, and blood kept flowing. On his face where his nose had completely exploded, blood flowed freely, forming a sharp contrast with the intact parts of his body. The few of them were watching, and the five-minute countdown on the monitor began once again. The fourth mission was completed. In the Zero Major Crimes Unit office at the NYPD, meanwhile, Bowman's cell phone rang. Looking at the message on the phone, Bowman's lips curled up slightly, revealing a cold smile. The big screen showed the fifth small game. Mission 1, Paulette will use a cigar cutter to give two middle fingers. Mission 2, Barzil will pull out his own hair. He could not burn it, but he could skin it. Select a mission within five minutes to complete, or all the members would be punished at random. Barzil looked at his own mission and felt his head go numb. It was as if his brain was starting to hurt. What do you mean when you said that we are saved? Barzil asked as he looked at Rainier. Rainier smiled and said, What I mean is that I have found the Death Inquisitor's mental trap. I have found a way for us to win this game. Hearing this, the audience in the live broadcast room could not remain calm. What is this guy saying? He means that he has found a shortcut to the game? I don't understand. Is there anyone with a high IQ who can explain it? They won't really let them win, right? These stupid pigs! Do you think you can win against the Death Inquisitor? Let's see how you will die. The Death Inquisitor really shouldn't have left them a shortcut. These animals don't deserve to live. Fudge them! We can't let them leave alive. Don't worry! Even if there is a shortcut, it's not something stupid pigs like them can find. In the darkness, the corners of Jack's mouth rose slightly, revealing a cold and cruel smile. At this moment, he looked very terrifying. His large mouth opened naturally, and his two rows of teeth that were as sharp as saw teeth emitted an extremely terrifying aura. 
Jack used a Nightmare Butcher skin card. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 133, Pulling Out His Intestines He... Jack laughed coldly. He held the bloody butcher knife in his hand as he looked at the people in the room from afar. Did you really find the shortcut to the game? The few of them looked very doubtful. Rainier opened his mouth and laughed. He bared his two rows of teeth and said, Do you still remember the first mission of the fourth small game? The key to rescuing Barzil was under the tree, but Barnett was also locked in the end, but the key opened Barzil's trap. The death judge didn't say that one key could open several locks. You should still remember this thought trap, right? And then? What are you trying to say? Barzil shook his head as he asked. He still didn't understand. Rainier looked at Barnett on the ground and said, You don't need me to tell you that he is dying. You should understand the rest of the simple reasoning without me saying it, right? Barzil seemed to suddenly understand and said, Yes. The death judge said that the key to open the metal ring on our bodies is placed in our small intestine. That is to say, we can open all the locks with the key, and we will be saved. You mean to dig out Barnett's small intestine and find the key, then the four of us will be saved. A look of ecstasy appeared on Paulette's face. Morse said anxiously, Then what are we waiting for? He is going to die anyway. Hurry up. I don't want to stay here for another second. Wait, Paulette said. What now? Don't you agree? Barzil said coldly. Paulette said, Why won't I agree? But before that, let me cut off his middle finger first. Let's make double preparations. You're right. Cut off his finger quickly, Barzil said in agreement. So Paulette took out a cigar cutter from the props prepared by the Death Inquisitor and put Barzil's middle finger in it. Crack. A bloody middle finger fell from his palm. Ah. Ah. Barnett, who was originally weak, suddenly screamed. Don't worry about him. Keep cutting. There's one more, Barzil said. Paulette sneered and then put the middle finger of Barnett's right hand into the bloody cigar cutter. Crack. It was very easy and neatly done. Two middle fingers dripping with blood were cut off just like that. Ah. Uh, Barnett lay on the ground and screamed again, then whimpered a few times. His fingers twitched twice, but soon there was no reaction. At this time, the screen flashed. The fifth game was completed, and the sixth five-minute countdown began. In the NYPD, meanwhile, Hart's cell phone also rang. Before everyone turned to look at him, he had already made his choice. Looking at Hart who had made his choice, Monica was a little jealous, but at the same time, she was a little nervous. She really wanted to participate in the selection game. On one hand, she had been frustrated with the way the Death Inquisitor's case had been handled, and she was already so eager to determine the Death Inquisitor's identity. If she were chosen to participate in the game as a lucky participant, she could at least convince herself that the Death Inquisitor took notice of her. This could at least make her comfort herself that the Death Inquisitor treated her as an opponent, rather than directly ignoring her. On the other hand, if she could participate in the game, she could imagine standing next to the Death Inquisitor, watching the same scene. With that, she would be able to better understand what the world in the mind of a genius like the Death Inquisitor was like. She was nervous because although she had not been chosen several times, there were a total of ten small games. If nothing unexpected happened, she would definitely be chosen. If she was chosen, she would stand in the same perspective as the Death Inquisitor, and she could look into the inner world of the Inquisitor. She did not know if she could understand it. Perhaps she would feel despair at the gap between herself and the Inquisitor, or she would become a believer of the Death Inquisitor. This made her nervous and even afraid of what was coming. In the other room, the criminals were looking at the screen that showed the mission. They watched as the countdown immediately began, and their hearts were broken. As before, the lucky participant chose the most difficult game, it was the sixth game. Mission 1. Perform surgery on Morse and remove two of his testicles. Mission 2. Rainer will cut off his own genitals and eat it. Choose a mission within 10 minutes to complete, or all of you will be punished with Mission 2. Looking at the contents of the mission, 
the faces of the four people turned extremely ugly. No matter who did this mission, they would become a transvestite. Moreover, if they could not complete it, everyone would be punished by mission two. Didn't this mean that everyone would become a transvestite? It was too terrifying. It was too perverted. Fudge! Quickly pull out Barnett's intestines. Barzil shouted. Rainier took a step forward and directly pulled down Barnett's pants. Fudge! This bunch of people are really inhumane. They're going to kill their own accomplices just like that. Animals are indeed animals. Look at their expressions. I can't believe that they're in cahoots. They're killing their partners just to keep their dicks. What animals? I can't believe there are such people in this world. They're not human. They're just a bunch of animals. While the viewers in the live broadcast room were posting bullet comments, Rainier had already opened up Barnett's anus. Because of the violent opening, the skin around him was torn open. Immediately, bright red blood flowed out, dyeing Rainier's hand red. However, the corner of his mouth revealed a trace of joy. Then, he dug inside for a while and pulled outwards. A section of red rectum was pulled out. Then, with another pull, the colon was pulled out. Then, it was the appendix. Another pull. Ah. Uh, Barnett, who was about to die, suddenly widened his eyes and screamed as he sat up. His bleeding face revealed an extremely painful and twisted expression. Ah. Uh, hold him down. Don't let him move. We don't have much time. Rainier said as his hands began to pull crazily. Under the lubrication of the fresh blood, the bright red small intestine was pulled out one by one. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, Barnett seemed to have gone crazy. His only left eye was about to pop out of its socket, and his teeth were biting so hard that it made a sharp sound. Fudge! How disgusting! So beautiful! Didn't you like doing that to your victims? I'll gut you now. Looking at him, I can't help but think of the three girls. They must have suffered more than this. That's why the five of them should be tortured like this. I believe in the Death Inquisitor. This game is not over yet. It's best to gut them all. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 134, Unimaginable Wisdom. Soon, Rainier dug out a few meters of blood-stained and greasy intestines. After Barnett let out his last scream, he fell to the ground and did not move. No one cared whether he was dead or alive. Everyone's eyes were on the bent intestines on the ground. What are you still looking at? Search. Rainier roared. Barzil, Morse, and Paulette immediately squatted down and held on to the intestines on the ground as they searched section by section. At this moment, many of the audience members in the live broadcast room had already vomited. They felt that they were about to become sick. Fudge! This is too disgusting. I can't take it anymore. I just vomited. I can't take it anymore. I'm going to vomit for a while more. You can still watch even if you can't take it anymore. You're such a brave warrior. The Death Inquisitor has so many inspirations. Each time, he can find a different way of execution. This one's a different disgusting way. Meanwhile, at the New York Police Department, everyone's face turned pale. Fudge! These people are simply mad dogs. Willie's face was full of horror. His strong heart was also trembling. Judy chewed on the donut in her mouth and said, Crazy dogs are so cute compared to them. They are said to be the best friends of humans. Judy, can you still eat? Open the bullet screen to cover it, Ross said. He had been a police officer for so many years. To be honest, he had seen all kinds of cruel and bloody scenes. However, the scene in front of him and watching those people pull out their partner's intestines with joy was disgusting to him. It was like watching criminals go on a treasure hunt. Each of them held a scene in their hands. He had never seen it before. He was really disgusted by it. Judy's expression turned ugly when she heard it. I haven't thought of it since you didn't tell me. I just want to throw up now. After saying that, she ran out. Among all of them, only Bowman was the calmest. After all, he was a forensic doctor. 
he dealt with corpses every day. There were also many corpses from criminal cases. He had seen how disgusting they were. However, the crazy behavior of these people still shocked him. In fact, if we just took out the intestines, people wouldn't die. The real death is mechanical intestinal obstruction. This will cause strangulation, intestinal obstruction, and intestinal necrosis, and will cause infection and sepsis. If we can send them to the hospital in time for treatment, they can be salvaged. However, Barnett lost too much blood, so he will definitely die. It can't be, right? Even if the intestines are taken out, they won't die. They can still be stuffed back in. Taken out again? Is this an intestine or a pocket? Anthony was also shocked. Bowman said, Sometimes life is very fragile, but sometimes it can be very tenacious. However, if the intestines are taken out, even if one can survive, living in the future will be torturous. Under other circumstances, it is impossible to take out the intestines from the anus because the anus is a part of the intestine. It is very difficult to take out the intestines from this, but Barnett's anus is completely torn. This kind of destruction is devastating. The two of them communicated while Ross looked at Monica. Do you think the key can open everyone's metal ring? Impossible! Monica answered decisively. Why? What do you think? Because this is a trap designed by the Death Inquisitor. From the very beginning, the key had been laid out in the intestines. Then, the first task was to dig out the eyes, guiding them step by step. Then, in the third small game, a mirror was used to attract Barzil's realization, so that he would ignore the danger under the mirror and fall into the trap. But this isn't the goal. The goal is to make Barnett fall into the trap a second time. Only in this way can we successfully let Rainier discover the secret of the key and let them continuously reveal their true nature in the destruction, putting on a big show of pulling out their accomplices' intestines. After hearing this, Ross's eyes suddenly trembled. The mission that seemed to have no pattern at all suddenly became a trajectory. It was becoming more and more like a game to secretly guide everyone. Oh my god! Death Judge! Who are you? Why is your game like a perfect piece of art? Not only that, the small game was chosen by the lucky participants. As long as one of them did not choose the most difficult game, the whole plan would be ruined. Why are you so sure that everyone will make the choice according to your expectations? Unbelievable. Incomprehensible. It was truly shocking. After analyzing it to this point, the respect they had for the Death Inquisitor rose to another level. Your analysis is too correct. It allowed my chaotic mind to find a clue. If that's the case, the Death Inquisitor has gone from a partial layout to an overall layout? That's right. This entire game was his chess game. It seemed to be a casual move, but it actually created an exquisite chess game. His wisdom was beyond my imagination. Even the outsiders were firmly in his grasp. His understanding of human psychology has already exceeded the scope of my understanding. When Monica said this, her tall and weak body trembled slightly. Ross also said, You and Judy are right. Not only did the Death Inquisitor not expand, but we did. We thought that we were close to the Death Inquisitor. Now it seems that there is still an insurmountable gap between us and him. You don't have to think too much. In fact, we should be glad. Ross said, You're right. We should be glad that he's our opponent and not our enemy. The corners of Monica's mouth rose slightly, revealing a sweet smile. However, a thought flashed through her mind. What if one day, the Death Inquisitor not only ignored the law, but also ignored justice. Terrifying. Too terrifying. Thinking of this, Monica felt as if the world was about to be destroyed. Soon, the four gut-wrenching criminals had almost finished searching the bloody and greasy small intestines on the ground. Found it! Paulette shouted loudly, and then he pushed the key outwards with brute force. Pucci! The small intestine was punctured and a key was revealed. Quick, quick, quick! Try it! Paulette was very excited, and he quickly inserted the key into the lock hole of the bracelet. Because it was covered with mucus, it was very slippery. He tried several times before he succeeded. But when Paulette inserted the key into the keyhole and wanted to turn the key, 
The smile on his face froze. Huh. It can't be turned. Impossible. Rainier snatched the key and inserted it into the keyhole of his wristband. It still couldn't be turned. Then he experimented on the anklet, but it still couldn't be opened. Their eyes turned cold. Barzil coldly shouted. Try Barnett's metal ring. This is a seven English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 135, Testicle Removal Surgery When Anir heard this, he immediately pounced forward. The key was inserted. It was turned. Kacha. With a sound, the wristband was opened. Impossible. This is impossible. How could this be? Rainier was on the verge of collapse. Why was his deduction not correct? Seeing this scene, the audience in the live broadcast room became excited. They held back their disgust and did not watch in vain. Ha! This bunch of idiots. They tortured their own comrades to death. It's too beautiful. Look at the lifeless look on his face. It's so comical, and it's so satisfying. Comparing IQ with the Death Inquisitor? You guys are still far from that. Just wait for your death. Why do I feel like all of this was planned by the Death Inquisitor? They seem to have fallen into a trap. Who knows? Anyway, my IQ isn't high enough. I just want to see what happens to them. The more miserable their deaths, the better. Anyway, I'm enjoying watching it now. Give me some gifts. The person who commented above is right. Don't think too much about these things that play with IQ. We are far from the Death Inquisitor. As long as you enjoy watching it, that's fine. I'll give you some gifts too. Another wave of gifts was given in the live broadcast room, and the atmosphere was very lively. But at this time, at the live broadcast venue, the temperature in the room seemed to have dropped to the freezing point. Morse looked at Wren with resentment. Because of you, Barnett is dead. So you will complete the mission this time. When Rainier heard this, his body trembled violently. The mission this time was to make him cut off his genitals and eat them. It was simply abnormal to the extreme. How could he do it? But obviously, Morse did not want to do the surgery, so he used Barnett's death to blackmail him. After thinking for a moment, Rainier smiled coldly and said, Morse, Barnett was about to die. Fudge! He won't die at all. It was you who dug out his intestines and caused his death. Hee <laughs> hee! I dug out his intestines. This is what you all agreed on. Besides, why did I do this? Didn't I do it so that everyone could leave alive? What's wrong with you? On the other hand, it's you who has been cowardly time and time again. You've caused us to become like this. Now that you don't want to do the surgery, you immediately push the blame onto me. Do you want everyone to die also you can leave by yourself? Barzil and Paulette's cold eyes immediately fell on Morse. Bullshoot! Morse was a little scared and panicked. He found that his thoughts were seen through. Rainier saw that he showed a hint of fear, and he continued. Besides, your mission is obviously much easier than mine. The testicle removal surgery is simple. A small incision will be made on the scrotum, then the testicle is taken out, then it will be sewed up. There won't be much bleeding, but if the whole thing is cut off, I will probably die from excessive blood loss. If I die, not only will I fail to complete the mission, but your situation will also become worse. That's right. You're right. One less person means one more danger. We must work together to minimize the damage. Barzil nodded in agreement. Morse, the testicle removal surgery is indeed a small operation. As long as it is preserved well, if we successfully pass the test and get out alive, you can even put it back, said Paulette. Morse found that he had no way out. He looked at Paris in panic and said, Is what you said true? Of course. Why would I lie to you? All right then. I'll do the mission this time. At the New York Police Department. Seeing this, Monica said, The death judge used four small games to guide them. He basically made them dig out their intestines and get the keys. I wonder what the next few small games will guide them to do. Ross thought for a while and said, 
But it's obvious that the style of this small game is different. But it's too difficult to guess his intentions from a small game. But this is also the brilliant part of this game. Yeah, let's see. Listening to their discussion, Judy said, Are you guys thinking too much? Could the Death Inquisitor be confiscating their crime tools? Ross said calmly. Turn off the bullet screen and continue recording. At this time, at the live broadcast venue, Paulette opened the medical kit prepared by the death judge. There were some simple medical instruments and simple surgical tools in it. Morse took off his pants and sat on the sofa. Paulette took the sharp scalpel and began the operation. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. A line of blood appeared on Morse's scrotum, and then the cut went deeper. It's about the same size, and I'm going to squeeze it out for you. Morse nodded. Although there was no anesthetic, the pain was not as intense as when he broke his foot bone, so he did not struggle violently. Paulette squeezed hard with his hand. A testicle slid out of his scrotum, but it was connected to a very thick spermatic cord. Seeing this scene, the audience in the live broadcast room was also shocked. What a big testicle! The testicles of animals are very big. You have never seen how big the testicles of blue whales are. Do you hate blue whales? Why are you comparing blue whales to these bastards? This is simply insulting animals. I feel like I'm walking into the operating room of a hospital. I am a medical student, so let me explain something to you. That thick thing is called a spermatic cord. Inside it are the vast deferens, ventral plexuses, and vast deferens arteries. You'll have to peel that off in a moment. The audience discussed among themselves. Soon, Paulette picked up the spermatic cord and peeled its film off along the top of the testicle. Just like that, a testicle was removed. Following the same procedure, the second testicle was quickly removed and the wound was stitched up. After everything was done, Basil, who was helping by the side, smiled and said, This surgery is really simple. I'm going back too. Yeah. I can do it too. It seems that those doctors aren't that great after all. Morse kept sucking in cold air. Although he felt that his scrotum was empty and he felt a little empty, the pain was alleviated a lot. Quick, quick, quick! Hurry up. Save my testicles. I still have to put them back. I'll do it, I'll do it! You sit and rest. At this moment, the screen flashed again. The sixth minigame was completed, and the seventh five-minute countdown began. At the NYPD... Anthony's cell phone rang. Everyone turned to look at Anthony in unison. They all wanted to know what the game was, but no one thought about which one he would choose because everyone had already chosen the most difficult game by default. Even in the Zero Major Crimes Unit, which was supposed to be hunting the Death Inquisitor, did not want the criminals to survive. Previously, they desperately wanted to save a few survivors. On one hand, they would be tried by the law after being rescued by the police. Those animals in the death broadcast could only be sentenced to death. On the other hand, they hoped that the survivors could provide clues about the death judge. But the gut-digging gang had escaped the law and was sentenced to imprisonment. This was something that no one wanted to accept. They hoped that the death judge would sentence them instead. Besides, the members of the Zero Major Crimes Unit knew that it would be exceptionally difficult to find the death judge anyway. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 136, The Real Method to Crack It The cold monitor displayed the seventh minigame. Mission 1, Paulette cuts off 3 kilograms of flesh from his body. Mission 2, perform a full circumcision on Barzil. All the flesh must be removed. Choose a mission within 10 minutes to complete. Otherwise, all members will be punished by having three kilograms of flesh removed. Looking at the small game, Monica narrowed her eyes. Another surgery mission. What's the connection between them? What does the death judge want to do? Bowman replied. This surgery is a small surgery for men. It's very routine and there's less bleeding. But if it's a full-cut surgery, as long as the man has a slight physiological reaction after the surgery, the wound will tear. Even if it's fully healed, once there's a reaction, it will be severely stretched, and even the old wound will be torn open. So when men do this surgery, 
they usually don't cut too much. The death judge wants to make it impossible for him to get an erection in the future. That's one thing, but I have a feeling that it won't be that simple. Yeah, I have the same feeling, but I can't think of any connection between these two surgeries. What exactly is he guiding them towards? Ross frowned. He could not find the answer. At the live broadcast, the four of them looked at each other. Barzil, you can do this mission. Paulette has three kilograms of meat. No matter where you cut it, there will be massive bleeding. We only have one medical box, so it will be difficult for us to control the situation. Rainier said. Compared to my mission, your circumcision is nothing, said Morse coldly as he was lying on the sofa. Barzil's breathing was much heavier. Paulette, don't forget that you owe me a circumcision. Seeing that he agreed, Paulette also breathed a sigh of relief. He nodded his head with a serious look on his face. Don't worry. As long as we survive, I, Paulette, will never forget you in the future. Hence, everyone began to prepare for the surgery. Compared to the first time, the few of them became more skilled. They had turned into chief surgeons and assistants. At this moment, in the darkness outside the door, Jack was smiling. Have you noticed that your surgical techniques are becoming more and more exquisite, hee <laughs> hee? It was an almost perfect all-cutting surgery performance. It was almost a perfect suture. There was a small amount of bleeding, and the pain was within the tolerable range. The minor surgery went very smoothly, and even the audience in the live broadcast room could not believe it. Fudge! These bastards actually learn how to perform surgery on their own. Judge, do something exciting. We are not happy watching this. You're right. Scum like them should have their hands and feet cut off. First, cripple them, then kill them one by one, and slowly torture them. Why are you chatting like you're the Death Inquisitor? At this moment, Paulette smiled and said, When we leave this place, I can even open a clinic. Are you going to operate on others? It's best to remove their testicles too. You're right. Let them all become transvestites. Ha! Listening to their conversation, the audience in the live broadcast room was furious. Fudge you. You're still thinking of harming people. The Death Inquisitor must kill them. We can't let them out. They will continue to harm people. Don't worry. The Death Judge will never let them out alive. What's there to talk about with a bunch of scumbags who are worse than animals? They can't get an erection now. Of course they'll think of harming others. The soundproof card was used for the entire scene, isolating the scene and the sound of the outside world. At this moment, Jack stood under the tree coldly, listening to their conversation. His gaze was gloomy as he sent the next game. The monitor flashed an announcement. The seventh game was completed, and the eighth countdown began. At the New York Police Department, in the office of the Zero Major Crimes Unit. Everyone's gaze fell on Ross, wanting to see what decision he would make. They could choose the most difficult game, but Ross was the person who wanted to capture the Death Inquisitor the most. He would choose the most difficult, or the simplest. If I choose the simplest game, is it possible to directly disrupt the Death Inquisitor's overall plan? Ross looked at Monica. Monica thought for a moment and said accurately, Impossible. It's impossible that the Death Inquisitor didn't consider this. He must have another plan. I got it. After Ross made his choice, everyone looked at the small game that refreshed on the big screen. The eighth small game. Mission 1, Morse cuts off one of his hands and one of his feet. Mission 2, perform an operation on Ren and remove his patella. Within 15 minutes, choose one mission to complete, or all of them will be severely punished. Seeing this, Rainier frowned and asked, What's a patella? It's the round bone on the knee, Paulette answered. Then wouldn't I be crippled? Rainier said angrily. Morse said coldly, That's still better than my mission. If I cut off one of my hands and one of my feet, then I would be truly crippled. Rainier's face was full of despair. He looked at the three of them with pleading eyes. Paulette looked at the scalpel that was stained with blood and then at Barnett who was on the ground. He frowned slightly. Do you feel that we have been led by the Death Inquisitor's hand? Nonsense! He asked us to complete the mission. 
Of course we are led by his hand. Barzil said coldly. Paulette shook his head and said, That's not what I mean. I'm saying that the Death Inquisitor's mission is to lead us to a dead end. Just like the first few missions, he slowly led us to Barnet. But Barnet died, and now he's guiding us again. But teller resection is not that simple. Our equipment is limited, and you know the consequences. There are still two missions left. If we continue to do as he says, I think we will definitely die. Also, the punishment has now become a severe punishment. What will the severe punishment be? Have you thought about it? That's right. We can't be led around. He will kill us. Rainier immediately agreed. He was not willing to have his patella removed anyway. Moore snorted and said, What else can we do if we don't follow him? That's right. We have no other way to go, Barzil said. Paulette shook his head and firmly said, We actually have a choice from the beginning, and I think that's the real way to survive. What way? Seeing that they were completely puzzled, Paulette said, Do you still remember the rules of the game that the Death Inquisitor said at the beginning? The key is in our small intestine. We have two ways to escape. One is to take out the small intestine and find the key and take off the metal ring. That is the real way to break the game. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 137, Leading into a Trap Pull out the small intestine? People will die. Paulette shook his head and said, We were misled by him. Why do we have to pull out the small intestine? What else? Surgery. The two missions just now reminded me. We can do the surgery ourselves. As long as we cut a small hole in the stomach, we can take out the small intestine, find the key, and stuff the small intestine back in. Then, we can suture the wound. Compared to the injuries we suffered during the missions, this surgery is not considered complicated. After hearing this, the three of them frowned. It seemed to make sense. The three of them began to hesitate. Cut, key, suture, and freedom. Rainier said with joy. That's right. This must be it. This is the real way to escape. If we could have thought of it in the beginning, we wouldn't have become like this. If we continue, I'll die in this round, but what about the next round? Who would die? What about the tenth level? Who would die? Bazaar and Morse's emotions became complicated. Yes, there were still two more levels of the minigame. No one knew what the mission of the next level of the minigame was, let alone who would complete it. Moreover, the difficulty of the mission seemed to be increasing, which meant that the danger level of the mission was also increasing. Fudge! Morse cursed. Then he looked at Barzil and said, What do you think? Barzil said, The two surgeries just now were very successful. I think this method is also feasible. Otherwise, if we continue to follow the mission, I'm afraid we won't have a good ending. After all, the Death Inquisitor is not a regular human being. Morse nodded and said, If you all agree, then I have no objections. Seeing that everyone agreed, Paulette also reminded them of the time. This mission is for 15 minutes, and there are only 12 minutes left. We have to take down the metal ring within the stipulated time. Otherwise, once the time is up, if the damnable pervert's severe punishment is to detonate everyone's metal ring, then we're all finished. So there's not much time left. Get ready to start. Seeing this, the audience in the live broadcast room widened their eyes. Fudge! How can this be? What's wrong with the Death Inquisitor today? He even taught them how to perform surgery. It's over! It looks like they're really going to escape. Death Inquisitor, hurry up and detonate their metal rings. Don't let them escape. The officers at the NYPD were also very surprised. It seems that they really found a way to survive this time, Hart said. Judy unhappily said, What's going on? The Death Inquisitor doesn't seem to be smart this time. How can he always be smart? The Death Inquisitor is still a human after all. How can he never make mistakes? There will be times when he will make mistakes, Willie said. Monica said, You're all wrong. This is the most brilliant part of the Death Inquisitor's plan. 
the climax of tonight's live broadcast is coming. Hearing this, except for Ross, the rest of them were all puzzled. Brilliant? Climax? Where? They were almost running away. Monica ran her hand through the hair on her forehead. She was very excited now. When the sixth and seventh minigames appeared, she still did not understand and found it all very messy. But after the eighth minigame appeared, she suddenly understood. She was so impressed that she did not know what to say. She calmed down a little. Monica said, All of us were wrong. They did not have any way to survive. The death judge used the first five quests to guide them to the key. Then, he completed the shocking scene of pulling out Barnett's small intestine. Now, he used Barnett's death and two minigames to make them think that they have the ability to perform surgery. In fact, all four of them have fallen into the death judge's trap. Ross also nodded and said, That's right! The scattered small games formed a complete chess game. If the first five small games were event A and the last three quests were event B, then event A led to Barnett's death, and event B led to four people undergoing surgery. As a result, these two events caused all five people to pull out their intestines. Hiss! All of a sudden, only the sound of gasps could be heard in the room. Oh my god! He can even play like this? This guy really has to carry a trap with him whenever he plays. He's really too smart. If this death inquisitor were a police officer, his case-solving rate would definitely be the highest in the country. I think it's even better that he's not a police officer. Otherwise, there wouldn't be such a satisfying live broadcast. You're right. If he's a cop, then wouldn't the five scumbags run away? Hearing their conversation, Ross didn't know what to say. He was very helpless. In this game, these people were about to become supporters of the Death Inquisitor. No, even if you say so, you'll still be the one to escape when they find the key, Anthony said. Don't forget that he still has an immediate punishment. Yeah. How could I forget about that? Anthony suddenly said. At this time, in the live broadcast, the four of them sat in a circle with a medical box in the middle. I'm starting. ZZ. Paulette was the first to use a scalpel to cut a wound in the middle of his abdomen. In an instant, his skin and flesh rolled up and blood gushed out. However, he did not panic too much. He calmly used a hemostatic cotton to stop the bleeding. The cut was about 10 centimeters wide. Then, Paulette reached his hand in. A warm breath hit his hand. What he touched was a twisted and greasy small intestine. Found it! Paulette immediately pulled the small intestine out of the abdominal cavity. It was like pulling out a rope covered in butter. Some mucus and blood were flowing on it, and there seemed to be a growing passion. Fudge! Barzil, who stood across him, cursed. When he saw Paulette pull out his intestines, Rainier also made his move. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Rainier sucked in a breath of cold air, and his abdomen contracted as well. It was so painful that he almost spasmed. Fudge! It hurts. Rainier gritted his teeth, and cold sweat instantly covered his entire face. He could not help but feel surprised. Why did Paulette look like he was fine? Could it be that he was not in pain? Fudge. However, Rainier still managed to pull out his small intestine smoothly. He used his hand to pinch it bit by bit, looking for the key to their survival. Barzil and Morse looked at each other. There was not much time left. Do it. Sizzle, sizzle. The moment the flesh was cut open, it rolled to both sides. Bright red blood flowed out like spring water. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, fudge. 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 Both of them were trembling from the pain, and their teeth could not stop clashing. This is a seven English podcast and you're listening to live stream. The Adjudicator of Death Novel Chapter 138 A Calculation That Never Goes Wrong But soon, Morse and Barzil also successfully dug out the small intestine, but Morse was slightly fatter. The red intestine was connected to a lot of yellow tissue, and the mucus and blood looked very greasy on it. It looked particularly disgusting. Under the camera, the four people formed a circle, as if they were measuring a rope. They dug out the small intestine and spread it on the ground. 
Blood and mucus flowed rapidly, and soon the four of them were covered in blood, the greasy small intestines kept sliding on the blood as their bodies trembled. The whole scene looked like a bed of snakes. Seeing this scene, the viewers watching the live broadcast all over the United States were stunned. Oh my god! The four of them dug out their intestines together. It's so spectacular. Will so many intestines intertwine together? It's so disgusting to watch. Three girls were raped and their intestines were dug out, and now Barnett was also killed. The intestines of the four of them were also dug out. Why do I feel like this is a trap set up by the Death Inquisitor? The analysis above is quite reasonable. Could it be that all five of them died from their intestines being dug out? Then the trap set up by the Death Inquisitor is too brilliant. Let them get into it by themselves. As expected, they are still far from being as intelligent as the Inquisitor. The audience was in an uproar. At this time, in the live broadcast venue, Paulette had searched for a long time, but he still could not find the key. How could there be no key? That's impossible. Paulette endured the intense pain and pinched his small intestine again. Fudge! Where's the key? Death Inquisitor, you fudging lied to me. Paulette roared. At this moment, Rainier's face was also covered in cold sweat, but he did not find any trace of the key after touching it. I don't have it either. Fudge. Hearing the two of them say this, Morse and Barzil also became anxious. The speed of their searching hands continued to increase, and their two hands kept squeezing on the greasy small intestine. Soon, their hands were covered in grease and blood. It was greasy and slippery. Fudge! I don't have any either. How can this be? Why does Barnett have a key in his small intestine? What should we do now? Looking at the intestines on the floor, the four of them broke down in jealousy. The blood in their abdomen was still flowing. If they could not suture it in time, they would lose too much blood and die from shock. Ha! Are you crazy? Well done, judge. That's how it should be. These animals don't deserve to live. That's great. We should open the champagne to celebrate. That's right. We shouldn't give these animals any chance to live. We should torture them to death. The audience in the live broadcast room was very happy, as if the climax had come once again. At the NYPD, in the office of the Zero Major Crimes Unit, Ross, on the other hand, frowned tightly. Without the key, doesn't that mean that the Death Inquisitor is cheating? Logically speaking, there shouldn't be no key. Even if they were to die, wouldn't there be another punishment? There's no need to break the rules of the game. Besides, doesn't Barnett have a key in his small intestine? Monica also frowned. Everyone might be a little disappointed with the Death Inquisitor, but she believed that the Death Inquisitor would never do such a thing. But in the next second, Bowman's words shocked everyone. Small intestine peristalsis effect. Bowman looked at the screen and said in shock. The normal small intestine peristalsis speed is about 0.5 to 2 cm slash s. If there is a stimulating foreign object, the peristalsis speed will be faster. From the key that Barnett took out from his small intestine, it seems to be made of metal. It is small and belongs to the mini key. It should move very fast in the intestine but it had not moved out of the small intestine at that time. However, after such a long time, the key moved down again. It should have entered the large intestine. As Bowman said this, his hands began to tremble slightly. The death judge said that the key was placed in the small intestine, but he did not say where the key would actually go. Wriggling the small intestine was common sense. If she waited for another half an hour, she might be able to expel it out of the body through the anus. Monica's body trembled slightly as she heard this. Her heart was beating crazily, wriggling the small intestine. Why did she ignore such simple common sense? She originally thought that she had discovered the truth, but in the end, it was really just the tip of the iceberg. And this tip of the iceberg was the most exciting part of the game. Why? She would never be as good as the death judge. The thing that disappointed him the most was his ignorance. Monica felt like she had been greatly hurt. Ross also sucked in a breath of cold air. He thought that he was getting closer to the Death Inquisitor, 
but he suddenly felt like he had just been slapped in the face. It hurt so much that his entire body trembled. Compared to the two of them, the others were only shocked because they had been watching the Death Inquisitor from afar. They had never expected to be close to the Death Inquisitor in terms of IQ. If there was no hope, there would be no disappointment. That's amazing! He even took into account the squirming of his small intestine. I feel that this planet will not be able to accommodate him any longer. He should emigrate to Mars. I'm starting to think that the Death Inquisitor might be ugly. Judy pouted and said with disappointment. Willie looked at her strangely and asked. Why do you think so? Think about it. He has such a high IQ, so his head must be very big. Maybe he looks like an alien. I'm so sad. She then started sobbing. The others were looking helpless. At this moment, the four of them fell into despair. But at this moment, the voice of the death judge sounded again. Idiots, I said that the key would be placed in your small intestines, but your intestines will squirm. If it has already moved down and entered your large intestines at this time, it might have already entered your rectum. Dig it out and see. Each of you has one. When the four people heard this, they were instantly dumbfounded. Fudge. Why didn't they think of this? Why was it like this? If they had known earlier, they would not have done the surgery. They could have just used their hands to dig out the large intestine. The wound would have been much smaller. They could have just taken out the key and stuffed it back in. Fudge. The four people were so angry that their bodies were trembling. Especially Paulette. This idea was his. He was very proud of himself for successfully breaking the Death Inquisitor's trap. But in the end, he was tricked. Seeing this, the viewers watching the live broadcast all over the United States immediately understood. Oh my god! The Inquisitor is really a genius among geniuses. I really can't believe it! He even calculated the wriggling of the small intestine. Death Inquisitor, what kind of person are you exactly? Our biology teacher said that if you learn biological knowledge well, you won't be afraid of being caught by the Death Inquisitor in the future. I have to admire your IQ. Every segment is related to each other. No wonder my son likes to watch it. Previously, I thought it was too bloody for him to watch. In the future, I want to watch it with him. The Death Inquisitor is too strong. I want to be a student of the Inquisitor. Hey, commenter above, wake up. If you become a student of the Inquisitor with your IQ, the Inquisitor will collapse. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of death novel. Chapter 139, The Death Inquisitor Appeared After hearing what the Death Inquisitor said, the four of them began to dig out their large intestines again. There was even more grease on the large intestine, and the four of them dug until their hands were full of oil. At this moment, Morse touched the colon all the way and suddenly felt something hard. It was carefully molded, and it even had teeth. Fudge! I found it. It's really in the large intestine. At this moment, Morse felt both joy and endless humiliation at the same time. I found it too. It's in the cecum. I found mine too. It's in the rectum. Fudge. I'm almost going to pull it out. Damn death inquisitor! I'm going to kill you! After being humiliated verbally, and now being humiliated by the truth, the four of them wanted to crash to death under the double blow. The four of them took out their keys one after another. Kacha! 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 The bracelets and anklets were all opened and thrown far away. The four of them immediately heaved a sigh of relief. However, they had also lost a lot of blood so they had to stitch up their wounds as soon as possible. Just as they were about to stuff their intestines back in, the sound of footsteps came from outside the door. Pada! 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 The heavy footsteps caused the four of them to have goosebumps all over their bodies, and their hearts were beating wildly. For some reason, a sense of fear instantly spread in their hearts. For a moment, the four people held their breaths and looked outside the door. Thud! Thud. Every time the heavy footsteps sounded, their hearts would beat violently, and then tremble. Who is it? Could it be the Death Inquisitor? 
Fudge you. Don't scare people outside. If you have the ability, come in. Just as he finished speaking. Creak. The door suddenly opened. Following the sound of the door opening, the hearts of the four people suddenly contracted. Their eyes were fixed on the door. They could only see that it was pitch black outside. There was no one outside. Fudge! Where is he? Did he leave again? Just when the four people were slightly relieved. Pada! Pada! A shadow walked in. Ah! Morse shouted. His eyes were wide open and his pupils dilated instantly. A man came in from outside. He was very tall. He was at least two meters tall. He was holding a sharp butcher knife dripping with blood, and there were several rusty steel nails stuck in his arms. There seemed to be black blood seeping out. It looked both bloody and terrifying. Not only that, that person's face was even more terrifying. His skin and flesh were almost completely rotten. His face was full of ravines, and his eyes were deeply sunken. His gaze was terrifying. His mouth was wide open, and his upper and lower jaw were filled with sawtooth-like teeth. Seeing this scene, the four of them only had one thought in their hearts. Terrifying. Terrifying. The four of them trembled crazily. They couldn't even think of resisting. They only dared to curse to embolden themselves. Who are you? The Death Inquisitor? Fudge! If you have the ability, take off your mask. Rainier, this doesn't seem to be a mask. At this moment, the recording was shot from the door into the room. Therefore, the viewers watching the live broadcast could only see the four of them looking terrified, but they could not see who they saw. This caused the viewers in the live broadcast room to be extremely anxious. The death judge is going to appear? Hurry up! Show your face. Judge, let us see your face. I'm so anxious. Show your face? Didn't you hear that? You're wearing a mask. I want to see you wearing a mask too. Come on. Judge, show your face. Meanwhile, at the NYPD, Ross was nervous. Very nervous. He could not help but rub his hands together. Was it finally going to happen? Monica's little heart was also beating wildly. She looked like a girl who was about to go on her first date with a man. Her mind was filled with all kinds of messy questions. Was he really going to appear on camera? Was he not afraid of being exposed? Was he tall? Was he fat? Was he handsome? Was he cool? What about his personality? What kind of mask would an intelligent person like him choose to wear? Hence, at this moment, everyone was staring at the screen. Their eyes were wide open, not daring to blink. They were afraid that they would miss the moment the Death Inquisitor appeared. At this moment, the Death Inquisitor's cold and repressed voice sounded in the live broadcast room. Hello? I am the Death Inquisitor. I hope you still remember the rules of the game. If you take out the key on your own, you will be subject to a random punishment. Jack looked coldly at the four of them looking at the smelly blood on the ground and the greasy intestines. After the four of them heard it, their bodies trembled violently. They had really forgotten about this. Barzil took a deep breath and pretended to be calm. He looked at the terrifying death judge in front of him. The death judge did not look like a human. He looked at the mask that had a hint of mockery in it. He did not know why, but he knew that it was definitely just a mask. However, he still felt a great fear in his heart. Even just a glance at him would cause his heart to beat faster and his breathing to become heavy. It was as if he had seen a malicious spirit. Barzil shouted to boost his courage. Then he shouted, What do you want to do? Kill us? You despicable pervert. You said that if we win the game, we can leave alive. Do you want to go back on your words now? As soon as he finished speaking, Morse, Rainier, and Paulette all looked at the Death Inquisitor. Their eyes were filled with fear and pleading. They only had the belief of surviving. Jack laughed coldly, then he said, You all deserve to die, but I shouldn't be the one to kill you. The game of death is not a killing game. Those who enter the live broadcast of death all have a good chance of surviving. 
You all have the same hope, though not many will be able to survive. Do you still remember the three girls you killed? After you mercilessly ravaged them, you dug out their intestines and let them die slowly in despair and pain. Now I'm going to punish you too. Pata. Pata. Jack walked over step by step, and the camera zoomed in, but Jack was never revealed. What are you doing? Don't come over, don't kill me. I beg you to let me go and give me a chance. I will do good deeds every day from now on. Sob, 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 sob. I'm sorry. I won't dare to do it again. I beg you to let me go. Give me a chance. I beg you. Please. Please don't kill me. If you spare me once, my cousin will give you a lot of money. He's a big drug lord. He has a lot of money, and he can give you as much as you want. Please really spare me. Don't you want money? You can have whatever you want. Just like I said before, you can have power, status, or women. All you have to do is choose. As long as you spare me. The four men were so frightened that their faces were covered with tears. These four gang members who had once killed hundreds of people were now like a bunch of pigs waiting to be slaughtered in front of the Death Inquisitor. All they could do was beg and repent. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Livestream, the adjudicator of Death Novel. Chapter 140, 80 Million Votes Jack's gaze was cold. In the live broadcast of Death, he did not believe in anyone's tears or anyone's repentance. Jack did not speak. He carried the butcher's knife and walked coldly towards the four sobbing men. The tall figure pressed down on them, making them feel suffocated in their despair. Jack snorted and stretched the butcher's knife over, pushing the only medical box away. If you win the punishment game, you'll get it. The four of them were stunned. They were very weak now. If they didn't have the medical box, they wouldn't be able to treat their wounds. Then they would have to wait for death. You fudging taught us how to operate, and now you're taking away the suturing tools. For a moment, their minds went blank. Their bodies were bathed in blood, and they curled up on the ground, moaning in pain. They could only place their last hope on winning the punishment game. The tall figure's hoarse and deep voice came again. Let me introduce the highlight of today's execution, your final punishment. You dug out the intestines of three girls, so you must be very familiar with the human intestines. The human intestines are divided into many parts, from the duodenum, jejunum, and ileum in the small intestine, the cecum in the large intestine, and so on. These intestines are a complete one in the human body, and the length of a completed intestine is about four times the height of the human body. Hearing this, the viewers in the live broadcast room were confused. Ha! Who is the judge of death? He knows psychology, science, and human body knowledge. I don't know, but he is definitely an eye-catching genius in life. But what does the judge mean by all this? Did the judge appear in person to teach us about the human body? Maybe it's also possible to use these four animals as anatomical models. How exciting. That's right. No matter what we say, we just need to kill these four animals. At this time, the viewers in the live broadcast room were not the only ones who were puzzled. In the office of the New York Police Department. Everyone was equally puzzled. What does he mean by this? Is he going to gut them? But haven't these four animals already dug out their intestines? Willie frowned and asked in puzzlement. He patted his head as if he was patting an old television. I don't know what he means, but the following punishment is definitely related to the intestines, Hart said. Hearing this, Judy could not help but laugh out loud. How can this be considered a deduction? Who can tell? Ross glanced at Judy and said indifferently, Have you found any clues about the Death Inquisitor? This is his first appearance. If you can't find any useful clues, you can stay and work overtime to find him. Judy immediately stopped smiling and lowered her head, hoping that Ross would not stare at her. After Ross said that, he frowned. He did not understand what the Death Inquisitor meant. It's useless for us to make wild guesses now. Let's continue watching, Monica said. Everyone's eyes fell back to the big screen, only to hear a hoarse and low voice continue to ring out. 
There are a total of six people participating in the death broadcast today. Among the five of you, the average height is 6.2 feet. Multiply that by four times the length and add up the length of the five of you. The total length of your intestines is about 124 feet, plus the 22 feet of Harriman's intestines. The total length of the intestines of the six torturers today is 146 feet, and these are all your bargaining chips in the final punishment. After that, let me introduce the final punishment game. The current president of the United States is the president with the highest number of votes in history, with a total of more than 80 million votes, and the punishment game requires the votes of the live broadcast viewers. All the viewers watching the live broadcast are the lucky participants in the live broadcast of death. Viewers in the live broadcast room can send bullet messages in the comments, and bullet messages. Kill or not kill. Each person will be allowed to vote only once. Each vote that does not kill can cancel out one vote that does kill. In addition, you can vote for yourselves. All you need to do is pull your intestines out of your anus. 146 feet represents 80 million votes of do not kill. Each foot represents 547,945 votes. You have a huge advantage. If you do not want to be killed, you need to get more votes than the president. But voting is a voluntary act. Each person can only pull out their own intestines. It's a pity that you've already lost two people. You have a total of five minutes of voting time. As long as the free votes are more than the free votes, even if you win, you can suture the wound with the medicine box. Otherwise, I will take the medicine box with me. Although the metal ring on your body has been untied, if you want to break the rules, want to directly take back the medicine box, or want to directly escape, he. After Jack finished speaking, he laughed coldly and waved the butcher knife in his hand. Hearing this, the audience in the live broadcast room went crazy. The entire screen was completely covered by bullet screens, showing a white screen. I'm also a lucky participant. Vote. Hurry up and vote. There's only five minutes left, so don't waste time. Vote to kill. The four of them have 50 million votes. Don't just watch and not vote, you have to vote to kill. Otherwise, they might really run away. You're right. You have to vote to kill. 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 At the NYPD. Everyone else also picked up their phones with grave expressions. Only Judy's hands were dancing on the keyboard of the laptop. Judy, aren't you going to vote? Don't you want them to die? Willie was the first to vote. Seeing that Judy did not pick up her phone and the screen was not showing the live broadcast, he took the initiative to ask her about it. Judy didn't say anything. Her fingers were still dancing on the keyboard, and her forehead was covered with tiny beads of sweat. Soon, Judy sighed and put down the keyboard in her hand. She said angrily, No! Still no! Don't blame yourself. It's normal. When someone's life is in your hands, it's hard to make a decision, even if you've made a decision before. It's the same when I'm chasing criminals. Logan said as he heard Judy's words, he said with some understanding. Why is the Death Inquisitor's live broadcast room so hard to break? How on earth did he build such a firewall? I can't even use the votes. Judy widened her eyes and said angrily. Oh right, I didn't hear you clearly. What did you say just now? Everyone looked at Judy helplessly, not knowing what to say. However, this small interlude did ease the heavy atmosphere just now. It's nothing. I just want to remind you that you haven't voted yet. Oh right, I almost forgot to vote. Please subscribe to A7 English Podcasts and enjoy listening every day with us. Thank you.